Welcome back, DIY car guys and car girls. And today, what feels like an eternity, we're finally going to put a belt on my YSI supercharger. I've done a lot of changes to mine to try to get more wrap around the blower. I put in an auto tensioner. I moved things around so it fit underneath the hood of my S10. You don't really see too many uh, Vortex superchargers in an S10. So I guess mine would be one of the few. But hopefully, everything that I've done to this, like I said, I don't have any experience with this, but I've watched a lot of videos of a lot of Vortex and with a belt and they're notorious for slipping. <laughs> I didn't want mine to slip because I wanted to approach around 20 PSI boost on my YSI. So I changed a lot of things. Today we'll go over all that and in the hopes that this guy won't throw belts and slip. Fingers crossed. Let's get to it. So Vortec, when they make these, they pretty much make this belt kit for an economy car, only doing like probably eight PSI. So they never really intended any of this to be pushed 20 PSI. They're gonna say that's why we make a COG version. But for street stuff, a belt's gonna be way easier on your crank down there, especially, and the blower right there driving around the street. Now I do not have a big block Chevy snout, so we'll see how well this works out. I do have the larger, stronger dampener down there that um, ATI makes. So we'll see if that helps out. And I put a pin in it, so it's a key and a pin. So essentially, it's dual keyed. Uh, this guy right here, Vortec only makes this with one plate. So I took two plates and I welded them together to stiffen this whole bracket up to keep it from flexing. So one of the things that people talk about a lot is that's flexing, and then some guys are saying, even if you do that, it's still gonna flex. So what I did was put this in here so we can tighten this, pull it this way, so that way it has another point of triangulation, I guess, just to keep this guy from flexing. So this will be pulling this way, and the belt will be pulling this way, and hopefully that'll keep it from flexing too much right there. Now for this guy to fit under the hood of an S10, it's pretty tough. So on this plate, I had to drill it and move it whole thing down a little bit. So now everything does clear when I close the hood, which is excellent. Now, traditionally with these guys, I added this right here. So this whole piece comes over right here and it stops right here. I added a little more on this because this is the tried and true manual tensioner they give you, but they want it to be right here on the top. But what it does is it just has one big long loop and the only way you're getting wrap around your pulley is with this guy in the top. And if you watch almost every single video I've seen that's set up that way, it starts to slip around like 6,400, 6,500 RPM. But well, we're gonna take it to seven. So I wanted to try to do my best to redo all this and make it so it wouldn't slip. So here we have our auto tensioner and we have the plate that I made for the auto tensioner. Okay, so uh, I just have these washers right here that puts everything in the right alignment. I know this thing is on there a little crooked, but this is all scrap that I had laying around. That was the only way I had to get this piece of fit with those four studs. Of course, all this is welded with a uh, Harbor Freight Flux Core welder. Some things in this build cost a lot of money and others do not. All right, so we got this little rig plate on there. Time for the auto tensioner. And here we go with the auto tensioner. So if you're wondering where this guy came from, I will have a link in the description below. This actually came off of a big rig truck. So it's pretty beefy. All right, so let's get this guy on there. It's kind of a two-step process to get everything on. First, I'll start by putting it up right here getting around both of those pulleys like so. We're gonna pull this this way. Let's 
All right, so that's the first half. And then we have another pull that we're gonna put right here to get more belt wrap, which this is a little bit more of a pain in the butt. I need to make a method that's gonna make this whole process easier in the future. But for right now, it's good enough to see if this all works. And then if it does, I will go back to this and figure it out. So. And finally, we have the manual tensioner right here, which gives you more belt wrap around this pulley. So you just kind of push that down, get the wrap you want. And there you go. Okay, one thing I've learned about this, since you have so many points of adjusting this whole belt, getting it really, really tight, you can actually get this thing so tight with the manual tensioner that it is hard as crap to rotate the motor over. So what I've learned is, Get it so you can still rotate it over without it being too tight because you can put such a draw on there. And that, I, I'm telling you right now, if you put that much force, especially on this without a big block snout, you'll probably uh, destroy your crank. Now, that's not the saying that I won't destroy my crank. Who knows? But I do have another pulley going this way. It's going to go on to the alternator. So hopefully that'll balance things out. I don't know. We're going to find out. So let's take a gander up that way and you can see the whole setup. I think that's going to do a lot better job at preventing belt slip. I don't know if it'll completely eliminate it. It might. Well, that's the hope. So next I'm going to get the piping. I'm going to do it stainless steel. That way I can tack it up and do it here. And then I'm going to get the blow off valve right around here. I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to get. And then after that, I got to tap the intake and get all that ready and also figure out where I'm gonna tap it here. Cause at the same time, when I tack that stainless steel up, I'm gonna take it to the welder to do the weld so they actually look nice. So I'm just gonna tack it up, take it him to do that. And there's a couple other things I wanna do around here. So I'm gonna drop it all off at the welder's house at the same time. But what do you guys think? So you think this is gonna do a lot better job at preventing belt slip? I think it probably will. We're gonna find out though guys. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and peace.